and welcome to a new edition of Chartwise Women. I'm here with Mary Ellen McGonigal from MEM Investment Research. And of course, my name is Erin Swenlin from DecisionPoint.com. I'm super excited about what we're going to talk about being um, our favorite things. Should we start uh, into song right now? <laughs> uh, yes, I will lip sync while you carry on. <laughs> And these are a few of my favorite things. <laughs> oh my, that was lovely. I have to say. I All have right, to well, I tried. <laughs> you know. But yes, yeah, so we're going to be talking about one of our favorite things, which is chart patterns. And anybody who is familiar with my work knows that uh, I am chart pattern crazy. I have this vision when I look at a chart, I'm automatically focused in on chart patterns. And so I think it's going to be a great topic today. And I know you're going to be sharing some of yours, right? Absolutely. I am known as the chart queen <laughs> in my house. I'm just kidding. Uh, no, no, no. It's absolutely an integral part of my work, of course, as well. What I'm going to do is share my charts and then also some extra characteristics that uh, from my Again, background with William O'Neill and Company, Investors Business Daily Parent Company. It's going to be all about uh, other factors such as earnings and what else drives these stocks higher when you marry it with a chart. So pretty powerful stuff. Yes, I really am excited. Uh, there's so much that you can get out of, a, out of a chart pattern, everything from setting stop levels, but I think some of my favorite patterns are the ones that actually will help you determine uh, minimum upside and downside targets. So once you see that chart pattern, it's going to give you that opportunity to look for those stop levels and then plan on an upside target uh, from that pattern. And they don't always work out. I mean, let's face it, nothing ever really does all the time in what we do, um, but they are really powerful. And I think that uh, you're gonna enjoy looking at what we have. Yes, so, sounds good. Without further ado, I think we should just get right on into our anchor point, which of course is our favorite chart patterns and of course, gratitude this time of year. Um, my little Christmas tree is out there. Uh, so a few of my favorite things and gratitude, of course, we've done some episodes on that. So I think it's Absolutely. that time of year that we should enjoy some of this. You well, bet. Okay. You can't wait. I know I can't wait. It's yes. For chart chat. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go ahead and go ahead and, and I'll let you share some of your chart patterns first. You bet. Here we go. What I'm going to be doing here initially is sharing with you a chart pattern that is by and large my most favorite and the most uh, used by myself and show you really how it works from there. I will show you examples of stocks that are just in the beginning stages of what are called a base breakout. So this is a software stock. I'm taking us back to November of last year when the base began and it's Coupa, C-O-U-P. And from here, what I wanted to share with you is what exactly a base breakout is comprised of. And there are several ways, but in essence, it, in this case, it is a base where the stock uh, attempts to hit a near-term high, pulls back, and as it breaks above that prior high, it's termed a base breakout. Oftentimes it will lead into an uptrend. And in this case, there are a couple of characteristics that you want to have in place in addition to this base breakout. One, you want that breakout to occur on heavy volume. That's indicating that the stock is under accumulation and that will be that starter, if you will, the accelerator to get that uptrend started. Also, one of the primary drivers from my work, and this is proven studies show this, that if you get that brace breakout after, in this case, triple digit earnings were reported back here in the beginning of the year, and we can see that it really propelled the stock higher. Now, oftentimes these stocks, they're not gonna endlessly trade higher. They will have a period of consolidation. This is a flat base formation, a back and fill, 
And then from here, we are entering into a new uptrend as the stock hits a new high above this flat base and into another uptrend, another quarterly triple digit earnings to help propel that stock higher. This was a big winner with my MEM Edge report. And it's very typical of what I look for when I'm identifying powerful looking or certainly very attractive looking charts that have that propensity or the possibility of really going on to far outpace the broader markets. So from here, let's go ahead and take a look at some examples that are current to when we are uh, recording or doing this particular show. Uh, this is Oracle, another software stock, O-R-C-L. This is another phenomenon that will occur when you are in the throes of earnings season. And, and for my work, earnings is the primary driver. If you're looking for stocks that are going to go on to really far outpace the markets, you want to have those big growers, those companies that are coming in with super, super strong numbers. Number. So here we are with ORCL. Now the markets had been in a downtrend, so you're not often going to get this kind of a look, but that's just where the markets were. And let's just take a look here. This is early, uh, four days ago. The stock gapped up almost 18%, huge volume. These are those characteristics that I mentioned to you. So now we have that base breakout on big volume. And I will tell you, when you get that gap up, that oftentimes is a very powerful move. You will get a period of consolidation, all dependent upon the markets, and then oftentimes trend higher. So outside indicators as well, we can see the RSI trending up above that 50, trending upward. And then I like to use a moving average convergence divergence, a MACD. So this MACD not only had a positive crossover black line up through the red, it also traded up above that net neutral zero. So pretty good looking chart there. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and share with you a couple of other stocks that are currently in the more beginning stages of their potential base breakouts. This is also going to tie us back into Oracle's big gap up. So again, this is on earnings. The company also had several other announcements relating to share buybacks and, and so forth, but all bullish news. This bullish news back here in the beginning of November pushed the stock out of this base gap up. And then this is very much in line with the broader markets, but it's really a period of consolidation. It's digesting this huge gap up. We can see your momentum indicator stayed up here above that net neutral zero, still in positive territory. And we are looking, it's looking really sweet. I have to say, if we can get that black line up through the red, that's going to tell us the momentum has shifted to the upside. And here is that potential base breakout. I'd love to see some volume on this, but uh, this is looking really quite attractive. From here, I just have a couple of more names that I can share with you. And all of them are going to be on uh, news driven as far as the base breakouts that we are experiencing. Uh, this is a little more of a V-shaped recovery, but that same concept applies. The stock hit a new high in price, pulled back, and is now had that gap up into new high territory. Take a look at the volume. This is what I mentioned, the stock's now under accumulation. This is all about a major Wall Street upgrade. And the stock is very much now in a confirmed uptrend with your outside momentum indicators. So let's see if I can share with you another uh, name that is in the throes of this base breakout. And this is Eli Lilly, L-L-Y is the ticker symbol. And you're going to see this a lot probably if we are sharing current charts today because the markets have been in a downtrend. So this is very typical with what we are, we're seeing really market wide, but the stock hit a new high in price, pulled back. And then today had this big gap up. And for a pharmaceutical stock, it's up over 8%, but it did push it out above this prior high. That's your base breakout. Take a look at the big volume here. This is all about news. Eli Lilly came out with three separate uh, news announcements relating to the development of new drugs, lymphoma, FDA approval, uh, Alzheimer drug, and so on. So super bullish 
they guide it higher going into next year markets investors like it we can see this black line up through the red that's telling us the momentum has now shifted to the upside nice volume on the base breakout and then your rsi trending upward so i i don't know if i have time for one more i i can leave it at that aaron because i know you I, have an awful lot to cover i know i have um five chart patterns that i want to share with you great i did do, I did do a um I, I did a chart pattern workshop, but I've done two of them. And so I do have some of the um, patterns that I did for that, but I'm actually gonna start off with one that is occurring as we speak, and that is on Kraft Heinz. So one of my all time favorite chart patterns is a double bottom. They're very easy to spot. Just remember one thing about a double bottom is that it is a reversal pattern, meaning if you see a double bottom at the top of a move to the upside or within a move to the upside, it's not a true double bottom. Double bottoms are reversal patterns. So here we go. We have it coming down here with KHC, two bottoms. And then what we look for on these, this is a bullish chart pattern, as I said, you look at this confirmation line that comes right through the top of the middle of that W shape. And once you get that breakout, that will confirm the pattern. So you may spot patterns in the making, but they aren't truly a chart pattern until they confirm. And in the case of a double bottom, it needs to break out above that midpoint of the W. And then you get to determine, okay, well, where is my target? Well, the nice thing about a double bottom is if you take the height of that pattern and put it on the top of the breakout period, you can see where your upside target is. So in the case of KHC, our upside target is just about 36.75. Um, more than likely when I looked at this, I would be looking at a move to 37.50, which is that strong area of overhead resistance. But this is a nice looking pattern. We're getting a breakout above that confirmation line. We have my PMO, which is on a crossover buy signal. Our RSI is just about ready to hit positive territory, but we're not there yet. Stochastics look great. And then I do look at the relative strength of the group against the S&P. And you can see the group is starting to do well in food products. And then against the um, SPY, KHC, is outperforming. That's why we've got a little bit of a rising line there. So that is my up-to-date one. But let's look at some of my um, patterns from my workshop. And I'm gonna actually start with Costco here, which is an ascending triangle. So this pattern is, it can be either a continuation of the move to the upside or it can be a reversal pattern. So it's okay, you don't have to really try and determine where, whether it's a, in the right place or not. But what you'll see is this flat top and then rising bottoms. And your expectation coming out of one of these patterns is of course an upside breakout. And the minimum upside target is about the height of the back of that pattern. So really, we ended up hitting that upside target right about here and then did continue further to the upside. So that's one of my favorite patterns as well. Another one that uh, you really might want to look at here is a falling wedge, descending wedge, falling wedge, however you'd like to name it. Um, but this is it's not a declining trend channel, okay? Because these um, falling lines here, the falling lines are going to kind of converge here. So you've got a, a more distinct downtrend and then a softer declining trend on the bottom of it. And the uh, it's an upside reversal is what you're looking for. And we certainly got that upside, I'm sorry, it was a continuation in this, in this case but we did get that breakout. And then the upside target, again, is measured by the back of the pattern. So we were to expect at least to move this high. And it looks like we did end up getting at least that on this particular uh, chart pattern. The next one I'm going to share with you is Amgen. I can find Amgen here. Um, right, there it is. And this is, uh, this is definitely one of my all time favorite chart patterns. I love the double bottoms, um, but I really do like these flag formations 
that's going to give you a flat pull, a real straight up kind of a rally. And then that consolidation, kind of like you were talking about, Mary Ellen. So you consolidate a little bit. Typically, you want to see those flags kind of pointed downward. Um, the straight across flags, they don't usually work out as well. And if you have an uptrending flag, those really don't work out all the time. So you really would like to see that kind of falling um, flag, if you will. And you can see that we got the breakout. The expectation is, again, the height of that pattern. So you can see that would have been the upside target. We did eventually hit that. Of course, we did have to experience a little bit of a, a uh, move to the downside, but ultimately that pattern did end up fulfilling. And this is a continuation pattern. That means that whatever the um, whatever your a trend was going into the pattern is going to continue out of the pattern. And I have one more here for you, and that is the triple bottom. And this particular pattern is just like a double bottom. Again, it's gonna come off of a declining trend because it is a reversal pattern. And again, we measure the height of that pattern and that gives you your upside expectation. It's called a minimum upside target, meaning it could go past that level. And in this case, we hit that minimum upside target of the triple bottom, and then it did continue further. So it hit that upside target, but then it continued on after that. So that was great. Um, I'm going to show you just one more because everybody's probably wondering, well, what about a head and shoulders? Um, you know, the head and shoulders is a bearish pattern, but the reverse head and shoulders, that's wrong. <laughs> it's a bullish pattern. So I'm going to, let me show you just really quickly a regular head and shoulders so you know what I'm talking about here. So you get the head, you get a left shoulder, a right shoulder. In this case, it is a bearish pattern. You can see it rounds off in, as a rounded top and the neckline is drawn right through here and you do get that declining trend. The actual minimum downside target would have been further than this, but given that it was on such a nice run, you've got that 50 well above the 200, that makes sense. So real quick, here's the reverse one and this one is bullish. I need to fix that, that bothers me. There's your head, there's your left shoulder, your right shoulder, and then that is your calculated minimum upside target. Now, one of the things, I, head and shoulders are not my favorite patterns because a lot of times they do not hit those targets like they're supposed to. It's one of the most well-known patterns, but it doesn't usually do so well. So that is my uh, all of my favorite chart patterns, if you will. But definitely those double bottoms are easy to spot and really easy to set your stops and your minimum upside targets, because of course you can set your stop at the bottom of those uh, patterns. My goodness. Very good. Very good. That was a lot. Whew. It was a lot. I think we covered quite a bit in our chart chat. So let's yeah. let everybody marinate over that while we take a quick break. We have been talking chart patterns here on Chartwise Women, and we're coming back off the break. And usually, this would be the time that we're going to share our wisdom of the week. So, I'm going to share mine very quickly, and then sure. I will pass it to you, Mary Ellen. I know you we're did. kind of similar in this, mm -hmm. um, but after looking at my charts, uh, my wisdom of the week is that basic chart patterns, and I showed you some of the very basic ones can help you identify those stop levels, the bottom of the patterns, and the upside targets, minimum upside targets, just based on what that pattern looks like. And I think that, you know, knowing these chart patterns really puts you ahead of the game. Very good. Yes. And my wisdom of the week is that chart patterns can often help determine the next step, uh, actually what the price of your stock may do next. And I know in the past, Aaron, you and I have talked about using these charts kind of like a treasure map, a treasure hunt 
And when you really can navigate those charts and and really see what they're telling you, it will definitely set you apart. There's no doubt about it. This is history repeating itself, price action, greed, fear, all on that chart. And if you can read it properly, you it will really set you apart. Absolutely. I totally agree with you on that one. It, it does. It really falls into place with um, what I was talking about as well. You know, this is one of those concepts that I think is often pretty easy for beginners to um, grasp because it's so visual, you know, being able to just point out at, on a chart and see those different patterns developing and then ultimately confirming and helping you to, to see where that price is going to go, just as you were saying. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So I think that it's probably time for us to talk about some action plans here you so that people can really start to hone their skills as far as chart pattern trading. So I'll let you go first on your yes, action. Yes, very good. This is all about instead of us just uh, talking and sharing it's a way for you to get involved and educate yourself further. So I'm sharing with you a link. It is brought to you by Investors Business Daily. This is uh, the parent, I'm sorry, I worked for William O'Neill and Company, so it's very dear to my heart as far as the common and most profitable chart patterns. So there will be a link below. They do list uh, the double bottom flat base and cup with handle formations. And from there, go into very great detail. It's really only a five minute read, but it does provide very precise instructions, if you will, on how you can not only watch these bases materialize, but your entry point and your best area to get into these stocks as they begin to really take off. So that'll be available. And I think it'll take about five minutes to read. That looks like a very good article for everybody to look at. Um, I'm going to go ahead and my action plan is for everybody to, if they would like, watch my workshops on trading chart patterns. And I'm going to just show you very quickly how to get to those. And if you just go to our homepage at decisionpoint.com and click on our blogs and links page, on this left-hand side, you will see a link for my workshops. And I've done quite a few of them if you wanted to go through some of those. But I did two on trading chart patterns. So the first one covers mostly bullish chart patterns. And then in trading chart patterns 2.0 for extra credit, I cover those bearish chart patterns. So I think both are really important to look at and learn. And then I would also just like to add that you can also read the books by um, uh, John Bukowski, B-U-K-O-W-S-K-I. He has, if you look him up on the internet, he has a really great website and you can read a lot more. I have the encyclopedia of chart patterns back there on my bookshelf, as well as one that was done that I highly recommend. I don't know, I think Stock Charts um, Bookstore might have it, but it's called The Visual Guide to Chart Patterns. And that's also by um, John Kowski. So go ahead and check those out. I think that we pretty much covered as much as we can as far as chart patterns. I did share my website, decisionpoint.com, and I would love for you to come and check it out. Uh, I have two products. I do a, a market newsletter that covers uh, all of the market, plus Bitcoin, oil, gold. And then I do a stock picking um, blog called Decision Point Diamond. So if you're interested in, in getting stock picks, that's one way that you can do that. Yeah, and for my work outside of this wonderful show, I do have a newsletter that comes out twice a week and oftentimes more if the markets are wobbly and I have uh, insights to share. You can go to meminvestmentresearch.com and I do have a special offer. You can trial that deluxe newsletter for four weeks for seven dollars right from that website i urge you to check it out because again my work is all about uncovering these stocks breaking out of these patterns poised to take off so i do give individual stock selection as well as sector rotation insights into the broader markets and 
uh, I have a wonderful uh, hundreds and hundreds of subscribers that are pretty vocal about letting me know that they enjoy my work. So check that out. Yes, I think uh, your website, your product is outstanding. I always tell everybody about that. Oh, that's um, so kind. Likewise, I mean, you're d d diamonds in the rough. Just <laughs> they, getting these stocks just as they're starting to take off. That's what it's all about, right? Absolutely is. So uh, that really is all we have time for today in our Chartwise Women show. I hope you enjoyed it. And do join us uh, every Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern to watch us live. Or, of course, you can find those links on YouTube and on StockChartsTV.com. So check it out. Very good. And have a happy week and happy trading. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.